So I was working on a video talking about visual novels in general. You know, how I think they're pretty rad and they're more than just dang them cute anime girls. But then Steam went like, Hey, autumn sales are going on, get them while it's hot. So I decided to take a quick look at the Steam store and make some recommendations on what visual novels to grab during a Steam sale. A uh, quick disclaimer, I'm only recommending games I personally have played and can vouch for. So if you're shocked that a game you think is amazing like Grisaya series by Frontwing or Ibenikuru by Alisoft is not on the list, it's probably because I personally haven't played it yet. Also, these recommendations are not in order of which I think is better than the other, but rather all of these I think are equally worth its purchase. Finally, although I put sale prices for this current autumn steam sale, these visual novels will most definitely come on sale again, come any season like winter or summer. So with any interest at that point, you can purchase them from steam. With that out of the way, here we go. The House in Fada Morgana. This visual novel is one that involves tragedies, like a lot of them. A mysterious being is enclosed in a desolate mansion, and at the behest of a maid, died into many tales of people. People who are initially happy, of people who are only wishing for the best, and of people who live in blind ignorance, and yet eventually every one of these people will fall. What do these tales have in common, and why are we viewing them in the first place? The house in Fata Morgana is here on the list because of its gothic vibes, its creeping horror, its distinct flair that separates it from many of the other stories, but most of all because it's good. Really good. Although there are a lot of characters in this visual novel, between the many different tales, and although you will know that they will all end in tragedy, there is still suspense and anticipation upon reading these stories. Characters, motivations, and underlying personalities are all laid hidden and revealed at the author's discretion to the player's delight. The horror in this game is the best kind. Rather than jump scares, the story serves up an ever encroaching dread of knowing the fall, yet not knowing who, how, or why it reaches that point. As to what lies at the end of these tales of tragedies, I leave that up to you interested viewers who decide to pick this tale up for yourself. Little Busters Little Busters is a tale of a group of high schoolers passing the time. Our main character Ricky falls into despair after losing his parents in a tragic accident. But after meeting the Little Busters, a ragtag group of friends, he too begins to smile again. Even as the years pass, the Little Busters still remain steadfast friends. However, as much as Ricky wishes they would, will these easy-going days truly never end? Little Busters follows Key Studios' usual pattern of storytelling, where the setting is startlingly normal, with a touch of the supernatural sprinkled in. And the other usual pattern is that, initially the story takes it very slow, allowing the viewer to grow to like these characters that inhabit this world and take in a relaxed atmosphere. This is then heavily contrasted to the emotional gut punches that appear in the latter half of every single route in their games. Even the strange mini-games sprinkled throughout the game only serve to add to the story. Also, might I add, the music really is beautiful in its own right as well, and I still get chills even when I'm hearing it right now. Which might be related to, you know, the game itself. Over the course of the time I played, I truly did grow to care about Ricky, Rin, and the rest of the gang. And if you didn't reach for a box of tissues once throughout the story, then dang man, you have an iron soul. Just like my best boy Masato, a name so manly his name literally translates to true man. All hail the Kiniku Empire! Asha! Kiniku Kiniku! Planetarian, Reverie of a Little Planet. There's an HD version of this actually, but it's only in Chinese, which I'm assuming the majority of people aren't fluid in. So we'll just talk about the regular version. If you want to see a story that's incredibly short, yet somehow packed full of emotion, look no further than Planetarian. The world is in complete ruin, individuals known as Junkers search for artifacts to sell. One such Junker meets Hoshino Yumemi, a seemingly broken robot taking care of a planetarium decades after it's abandoned, and agrees for some reason to help her fix projector. A short 2-3 hour story with no choices to make. While at first interactions with the Junko with Yumemi will probably aggravate you nearly as much as it aggravates the character himself, I eventually found it quite heartwarming, as I'm sure most of you will as well. Even though there are tons of hints of a terrible post-apocalyptic past, and we slowly learn of the horrible things faced by the Junker throughout his life, all this story really is about is about the time spent between a Junker and a broken down robot. And perhaps a little bit of normal, as long since we're forgotten in an abnormal world. Planetarium 
Valhalla, cyberpunk bartending action. Chill Vibes is the name of the game here, as is immediately obvious from the awesome electronic soundtrack to the starting screen of the game. Valhalla tells a tale of Jill, a bartender in some unnamed cyberpunk future. A sarcastic, bitter person who tends to have a deadpan reaction to pretty much everything, so generally a pretty likable protagonist. Jill meets various customers throughout the few days the game takes place in, listening to their various stories and perhaps even serving a drink or two that may or may not change their lives one way or the other. Also, hopefully not go broke. I'm a sucker for pixelated artwork, so the drawing style of Valhalla is right up my alley. And Valhalla's primary gameplay draw, the making and serving of drinks, is incredibly simple, and yet at the same time, maybe one of the better methods of decision making I've ever seen in a visual novel. While customers will request drinks, you in the end are the one choosing what to make, and the results may change from simply getting more tips to perhaps finding a bit more about them. Make no mistake though, this isn't a game about serving drinks, but rather a game about serving drinks to listen to the story of the customers. The dialogue written for each character is usually full of banter and wit, and even though you don't meet each character for very long, they all have interesting stories to learn about. Also, might I add how chill this music is? If you're looking for a relaxed time, this is a visual novel for you. Root Double, Before Crime After Days Extended Edition. Certainly a mouthful, I know, but the story isn't anywhere near as pretentious as the title makes it sound. This visual novel is two individual stories that eventually meet together. One is the before crime portion following Natsuhiko Tenwa, a classic high school scenario with a psychic twist as he and his friends spend their time uncovering the backstory of events leading up to the incident. And the second scenario, After Days, following Watase Kasasagi, a rescue squad captain suffering from amnesia in the middle of a nuclear facility lockdown as he tries to rally together the survivors and escape an ever worsening situation. Root Double is a story more in line with the visual novels I tend to enjoy, ones with plenty of action, hazards, and characters facing hard decisions. Well, part of it is anyways. While I personally thought the before crime school route was kind of boring, I found after days and the tense situations Watase finds himself in to be an absolute blast to read through. The high tension situations Watase faces like surviving collapsed floors, electrifying hazards, really get the blood pumping. The decision gimmick, or senses sympathy system as the game introduces it, is an interesting way to make choices, where instead of clicking a choice, the player instead messes around with relationship meters to make their decisions. It's an interesting idea, but it's really overly complicated for really no good reason. Root Double is full of twists and turns, and as a suspenseful survival visual novel, it really does knock it out of the park. Characters are likable for the most part, and as a complete package, I can't recommend it enough. I do recommend playing the school route first so that the survival part of the game, with Watase and Further Beyond, don't lose their pacing. But be warned, the school route does drag hard with all the backstory and sci-fi mumbo jumbo they have to explain. Umineko, Question and Answer Arcs Might I say before we go any further that wow does the Steam trailer suck really bad? Like did they just slap 10 minutes of the intro auto scrolled and called it a day? Like. The heck? Which is funny because underneath this terrible trailer is a pretty legendary visual novel. Umineko's setting is Rokenjima, an island privately owned by the Ushiro Miya family who have come to settle a massive inheritance. However, a mysterious letter is left by a witch, and soon after, horrible murders occur with no answers of who done it or how they did it. As people disappear one by one, who will be the last one left, and will he or she be able to find out what happened? What I should first point out is that while Umineko might at first sound like a horror novel, but with all the gruesome murders and deaths throughout the story, it's actually more of a thriller mystery with supernatural elements. It's a tale of a battle of wits between our appropriately named hero, Battler, and the golden witch Beatrice. It's a tale of endlessly repeating visits of death, and a tale of love gained and lost and so much more. The second thing I should probably point out here is that this is a kinetic novel, which means that there are no choices to make here merely a story that is presented to you. But make no mistake, that doesn't mean the scares are any less real or the conflicts the fake hero faces are any less dire. If you're looking for a mystery full of twists and turns that'll keep you engrossed for dozens of hours, check this one out. To the Moon This one is not a visual novel in the traditional sense, but it is an RPG Maker game purely about experiencing a story through a visual medium, so close enough in my opinion. To the Moon is an adventure game where you control Dr. Watts, a member of a pair of doctors with Dr. Rosaline, who are dedicated to fulfilling the wish of their patient, but only in their head. 
For this case, they try to fulfill the dream of Johnny, an elderly man whose last wish for some reason is to go to the moon. Underneath this rough exterior of an RPG Maker game lies a simple yet incredibly touching story. Although it's not a very long experience, probably clocking in about 4-6 to six hours, maybe a lot faster if you just run through it, it's still one of those that I think the people will still fondly look back upon once it's said and done. You learn a lot about these characters in the short time you have with them, of both the patient whom you're trying to help, and of the doctors whom you control. What it lacks in facial expressions and snappy sound effects, it more than makes up for with a melancholic atmosphere and a dialogue that hits you hard even without any spoken voices. Say Narukana. Surprisingly enough, this is probably the first one I put on the list that is actually in the realm of fantasy. Nozomu is an ordinary student attending a normal school with his friends, fooling around every day. Everything changes, however, when the ancient soul of the god known as the Destroyer awakens from within him. Soon, he and his friends are forced on a journey across dimensions. One, if uncompleted, could doom the entire universe as they know it. As an awakened god threatens to overtake his body, can Nozomu and his friends still return home safely? You know, honestly, I gave a description of Satan Arakana just now, but I'd normally recommend A and Ocelia for having a better story and characters. However, while I do think the visuals are dated in both, they are pretty butt ugly in A and Ocelia by today's standards. So I'll recommend this game instead. Satan Arakana is unique on this list simply because it's actually a visual novel wrapped in a strategic RPG hybrid. While the gameplay isn't super polished, it still requires some form of thinking for the players, especially the aiming for high ranks as the game evaluates player between every mission. Fight work is decent, and combat is rewarding with new abilities to learn and to witness as you go through the game, if eventually ending a bit repetitive due to how long fights get near the end of the game. Perhaps my biggest problem with how the game is, is that route branching occurs only in the last 5 hours of the game, which is bad since the game is pretty long standing at like 40 hours for a single playthrough. That said, I think it's still worth a single playthrough, and there are certainly far worse games by Steam Visual Novel standards. Symphonic Rain, HD Edition Our boy Chris lives in a city called Piova, a city of never-ending eternal rain, and has kinda just been bumming around. Here he attends the Piova Communal School of Music, a school whose graduation requirement is that a student must perform an original song for the final examination. However, Chris doesn't seem to care as he just kind of wastes his days away. As time grows shorter, however, and at his friends and teachers' urgings, perhaps even he will find a partner who can allow him to play once more again. A simple, yet not so simple story about music and love. Also, Chris got some fairy for some reason, so that's chill too, I guess. Supposedly, the Steam version is an HD remake of the original. That said, I still vastly prefer the original artwork, as the new one just kind of looks a tad bit off especially the eye placement, compared to the much more softer original drawings. Aside from that, Symphonic Rain released on Steam is pretty much the same game. I find the story to be great, with a surprising amount of darker parts in it, and what is otherwise initially an, a really deceptively cute game. While the main gameplay aspect fits thematically in the visual novel, it's quite terrible in terms of a practical standpoint. As this is a visual novel about music as the centerpiece, Aside from making choices to achieve an ending, this game has interspersed throughout the story a rudimentary rhythm game. While I can see where they were going with this, as just like the main character, you practice this song repeatedly to do well at the recital and end. In actual practice, it's really boring to play the same song with no changes over and over. Thank the heavens, it's entirely optional except for the last performance near the end in Lisa's route. Aside from the sad excuse of a rhythm game, the plot itself is great, and the music is always this mixture of subdued joy and sadness, which really does fit with the game. If you're looking for a story to read that isn't quite as meaty as some of the other ones I mentioned, and yet still has a surprising level of depth. 428 Shibuya Scramble Really, I just did like an hour long rant about this entire game, which you can check at the end of the video, so... Quickly though, five people in Shibuya run to a conspiracy that threatens to engulf all of Shibuya. That's it. I recommend this game for the sheer amount of comedy and emotions present in the game. Their use of live action is quite refreshing, especially in a medium which rarely ever does so, and does it well. If you're looking for a visual novel that emulates a thriller TV drama, this is definitely the one for you. The biggest problem is the lack of a skip button. If you want to hear more about this visual novel at all, just check my insane hour-long review which I'll have linked at the end. 
These are just some of the visual novels that I saw on the Steam page while scrolling through the sales that I personally enjoyed before. If you have any other recommendations you'd like to share to others, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Since there are definitely some I left out due to not having played it yet, or maybe covering for a different video in the future. If you would like me to go into any more detail about any of these visual novels I just mentioned, leave a comment below and we can talk about it there, or I can make a future video on it. I promise I'll not go nearly as long as the previous video on 42 2 Shibuya Scramble. If you like what you saw, you could always hit the like button, and subscribe to keep up to date when I throw out my next video. Well, with that, I'll see you around next time.